Hello and welcome back to another episode of what is a smitten kitten bundle of fluffiness on a rainy autumn day. That is the Culture Dudes. And today, we're in a very special place. Welcome to St. Bride's Church. The church is located in the city of London and due to its proximity being on Fleet Street, has a close association with newspapers and journalists. The church is one of the most ancient churches in London and is thought to go back to the Middle Saxon era uh, in the 7th century. Its relationship with the monarchy goes back to the year 1205 when King John's Curia Regis, i.e. the King's Inner Court, was held at St Bride's. Its association with the press goes back to the year 1500 when Vinkin de Vord, a bit of a mouthful, set up the first printing press in the churchyard. Now here is something interesting, particularly for our American viewers. The parents of the first English-born child in North America were married at this church. Eleanor White, daughter to artist and explorer John White, was married at the church to the tiler and bricklayer Ananias Dare. After immigrating to America, their daughter Virginia Dare was born on Roanoke Island in the year 1587. The church suffered a double tragedy in the 1660s. First, with the Great Plague of London in 1665, where some 2,111 people died in St. Bride's Parish. The following year, the church was completely destroyed during the Great Fire. The only thing to survive the fire was some fused bell metal. This can still be found in the crypt. More on this later. The Lady Chapel in the North Isle has what today is known as the Journalist's Altar. Previously called the Hostages Altar, it was used as a vigil for those kidnapped in the Middle East in the 1980s, people like John McCarthy. Today, candles are lit for journalists who are held hostage and for those who have been killed in the line of duty. As we enter the nave, the floor changes from perfect stone to a highly polished black and white Belgian and Italian marble. When you look up, you will see the magnificent East End with its curved apse and dome ceiling. The Eagle Lectern here survived both the Great Fire of London and also the Fire of 1940. Samuel Pepys, the great diarist and naval administrator who wrote extensively both about the Great Plague and the Great Fire of London, was baptised at this church. The Royal Coat of Arms can be seen here above our heads, carved in situ from a single block of beer stone Weighing nearly two tons, it was presented to the church by the Bath and Portland Stone Firms Company. The organ you've been hearing in the background throughout this video was built by the John Compton Organ Company and is arguably one of their finest works. We now enter the crypt. Following the excavation after the rebuilding work of 1953, seven of these crypts were discovered. So Here we find remains of a Roman pavement. This dates back to the year AD 180. Also found were a range of other Roman artifacts discovered on the site. Also discovered in the excavation were two charnel houses with bones piled to the roof. Many of these were grouped together in categories and were set out in a checkerboard pattern. Experts say that some of these were victims of the Great Plague of 1665, while others were from the devastating cholera epidemic of 1854. Also in the crypt, there is a medieval chapel. When Sir Christopher Wren rebuilt the church many centuries later, he constructed two heavy stone arches to support the weight of the wall. It was later restored in 2002 as a memorial to the Harmsworth family and to the staff of the associated newspapers who lost their lives during the First and Second World Wars. It is rumoured that the steeple, not pictured here, may have been the inspiration to the tiered wedding cake. In 1703, a baker by the name of Thomas Rich, in an attempt to impress his fiancée, built the world's first tiered wedding cake. Wedding cakes were very different prior to this. They were known as bride pie and may have included ingredients such as oysters, lambs, you know what, pine kernels and other unmentionable ingredients. Some of these bride pies would include compartments inside them that included live birds or snakes. 
for entertainment. We also found these rare Victorian iron caskets dating back to the days of Burke and Hare, otherwise known as the body snatchers. They promise safety for the dead by deterring thieves who exhume their bodies for money. You will see loads of headstones and tributes to both former parishioners and broadcasters. This really is a fascinating place to visit and this short video doesn't do it justice. It's one of those places, unless you know where you're going, is very easy to miss. If you are planning to visit this church, which we highly recommend, the easiest way to come here is by rail, you can get off at City Thameslink Station. Alternatively, if you're coming by the Tube, you can get off at Blackfriars, and it's a short walk from there. We hope you enjoyed this video and indeed learnt something new for your next pub quiz. Please spread the word and give us a follow and a like, and until the next one, from Michele and Baz, my best Italian accent. Arrivederci ragazzi. Bye bye.